Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another edition of uh, Where to Live in Northern Virginia. And today's a special show for you. Um, we're doing this at night, so it's a little bit later than our normal show. Mm -hmm. We're just checking on our audio right now. How are you doing today, Crystal? I am doing great. How about you, Abraham? I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. Today is Valentine's Day. The missus, her, she got me a little card and some candies that I've already consumed and digested. <laughs> uh, so I hope that you all are having a great start or end to your Valentine's Day celebration. It's just... All right, audio sounds good. All right. Oh, audio's not great, though. Let's see. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Is that better? Uh, okay. okay, excellent. Now we're now we're cooking with grease. Okay, excellent. Now we're cooking with grease. Let's just get a little chat going on. How are you all doing today? We hope you're doing fine. We're just perfect, perfect, excellent, excellent. All right. So today we're talking about the uh, five best rated schools elementary schools in fairfax county are five of the best rated five of the best five rated of schools. the best rated elementary based on schools. our research these are some stats that we've looked into um we've kind of used some of the same websites that all of you all have access to absolutely so we use uh, we use a couple different websites right because if you're at all familiar with research in schools you know there are a plethora of websites out there and um, they each offer different information some of them are rated more based upon parent reviews while other of them rely, rely more on test scores and things of that nature yeah. um so we used uh, niche.com great schools uh u.s news School Digger and also Public School Review. Okay. So using those five websites, we look for uh, the schools that came up repeatedly. Um, they scored well or were rated well by each of these individual websites. What we notice is that a lot of our clients are usually using several websites to kind of come to come up with a you know this is my favorite school or these are my target schools, mm -hmm. and we wanted to create a piece of content for you all that would help you at least start the process mm -hmm. of researching schools, help you to understand how we look at schools mm -hmm. and rank schools or, or rate schools, and by focusing on the best rated schools in Fairfax County, you're also looking at some of the some of the schools that are probably going to be in the higher price ranges, but they're also going to be great for individuals who may only be here for a few years and they're going to hold on to the property and they want to have consistent rental income because the top rated schools or the best rated schools are usually highly sought out. Mm -hmm. So if you do leave your property um, quicker than you want to, or maybe you, you get PCS out of the area, but you know you're going to have another... Um, you may be coming back to the area. Yes. Um, or even if you're looking for your forever home, yes. um, most of the top-rated elementary schools are going to be in the top-rated high school pyramids as well. Um, and so you'll see that throughout this, uh, this video that the schools that we talk about are each in uh, highly regarded high school pyramids. That's correct. How are we going to work through the data or the schools that we've selected here is, first we're gonna tell you a little bit about the school information itself. Then we're gonna actually cover um, just information as far as like the rating. So we'll go through the different ratings mm -hmm. that you'll find online. Then we'll cover the average sales price of homes in that particular area. We'll also talk about like prop properties that are priced at the higher end or the lower end. We'll show you actually two properties for each school. We'll show you a property that has that sell it that that sold at the average sales price. Then we'll show you something that sold below the average sales price to kind of give you an idea of what. It, what's the minimum it would take to buy in a certain, on a highly rated school? Uh, Absolutely, area. because what we're going to find uh, for the most part is that the top rated schools are going to be in the more expensive parts of Fairfax County. Um, and so we want to show you that although many of the areas are going to be above the average sales price for Fairfax County, that does not mean you can't find something on the lower price range um, and put you and still put yourself in one of those highly rated schools. Yes. 
finally we're going to finish up because this is fairfax county we're actually going to show you at the end of the video we're going to show you how to confirm what school your the property that you're looking into or the property you purchased what the elementary school mm -hmm. middle school and high school that property is in stay tuned to the end because you want to make sure that any property that you have any interest in if schools are important to you check out this website before you place your offer on a property to confirm where uh what what school is assigned to that particular property it's a super quick process and we'll we'll cover that that information at the end excellent and before we get into everything we want to remind you to check out the perfect home questionnaire that's going to be linked down below in the description if you're relocating to the area or just moving within uh, northern virginia if you would like to chat with us about your move abraham can answer any questions you have so fill out that perfect home questionnaire like you see on the screen and we'll set up a perfect home consultation where you'll meet with abraham via zoom and discuss your moving plans okay so before we get into the content just want to let you know how this this video is going to uh, play out. So first we're gonna cover uh, a school. We'll give you all the, the information that just covered for every school, and then we'll clear out the comments. So mm -hmm. if you have a comment, if you have a question, post it down below. I already see that we have one comment here. We're gonna take a look at that comment and then we'll get into our first school. All right, so Double Lizard says, uh, thank you for watching Double Lizard. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any information on elementary schools in Chantilly? Well, we actually do. One of the <laughs> schools, <laughs> one of the schools on today's list is going to be located in that Chantilly Centerville area. That's so correct. stay tuned, stay for, tuned that. for that. Um, and also just want to let you know, we will have a web page up tomorrow that will allow you to search homes uh, that are in the areas of these schools that we're going to talk about today. That's correct. Before we get into the, the school content, I just want to kind of give you all an overview of where uh, the different schools that we're going to be covering are located on this little map right here. We're also going to give you the distance to major commuting sites, right? So where, mm -hmm. where people would likely commute to uh, in this area from the, the homes that are around uh, that particular area. So stay tuned for that uh, as well. So the first school we have on our list is... So first up, we're going to have Coven Run. And Coven Run Elementary is going to be located in Vienna. Um, so this is going to be a school with a population of around 780 students. So we like to consider that like a mid-sized school. We consider schools to be small if they have fewer than 600 students. A mid-sized school anywhere from six to 800 students. And then anything over 800 students, we consider that a pretty large elementary school. So this is going to be a mid-sized school with about 780 students. Uh, Student-teacher ratio is right about around the average of Fairfax County, which is 16 to 1. And you're looking at as far as test scores go, you're looking at a school that has 97% of its students that score at or above the proficiency level for math, and then 95% are above for reading. Um, and then as far as the makeup of the school, this school has a minority enrollment of about 44%. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at the different websites that we use uh, to rate these schools, we'll see that this web this school has a A rating on niche. Dot com. Uh, it has a 9 out of 10 on great schools. It is rated number 7 uh, through, out of all elementary schools in Fairfax County on U.S. News website. It has a 10 out of 10 on the public school review, which puts it in the top 1% of schools in Fairfax County. And then it's going to be located in the Langley Pyramid. Mm -hmm. um, and Langley is actually one of the top rated high schools uh, in Northern Virginia. It comes and you look at U.S. News, it actually is number 2 behind only uh, Thomas Jefferson, which is a magnet school in the area that's correct a cool thing about this uh, particular school here is that you have great commuting options um, to Tyson's which is going to be 3.5 miles uh, from this this school here so Tyson's is right here on on the map and then you're 16.7 I mean 16.5 miles uh, from the Pentagon and then you're 17 miles to downtown DC and 22 miles to Fort Belvoir. So you're probably not going to be re, um, commuting to mm -hmm. uh, Fort Belvoir uh, from this particular school district, unless maybe if, you, if your spouse is maybe working at Tyson's and you kind of consider this to be the middle ground mm -hmm. um, and, you, and you really want to get into Langley uh, Pyramid. 
So. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, that is a highly sought after school pyramid. And then just to go back, a few more things about the school itself. This school is a level four uh, advanced academic center. And so that means that they have students in the area who not only are at the school, who not only live in the area, but also um, students from nearby neighborhoods that do not have um, advanced level four advanced placement um, will also attend that school. Um, and so that we have two different AP programs here. They start from grades three through six. So you have some students who are pulled out of certain classes um, and they are in part-time advanced placement and then you have centers which I believe every school on our list today is going to be an advanced placement center. Yes. And advanced placement in elementary school starts at third grade, mm -hmm. right? So if you have a wizard in uh, kindergarten, you know, hold off, hold off <laughs> before you, you start to inquire about advanced placement. Now a few more things at this school. They do have a STEAM lab. They also have strings program for ages uh, for grades three through six, a band for four through six. And then as far as enrichment programs, those are all going to be sponsored by their PTO, and that's going to include things like art program, cultural nights, uh, family nights, as well as they take care of all of the uh, before and after care programs at the school. So now we're going to look at where um, where this school is located. So it is in the uh, Vienna uh, area mm -hmm. uh, up here. Uh, let's see, we're looking at Colvin Run, mm -hmm. right at the very top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you are close to the, the northern uh, part of, of Fairfax County, and now we're actually going to go take a look at one of the uh, properties. Before we look at the properties, the average sales price in this area uh, that for, for homes that go to, that are assigned to this school is going to be $1.4 million. Uh, and then the the low is at seven fifty. The high was at three point four million. So we're going to take a look at our first property, which is going to be at at one point four or really one point three mm -hmm. uh, million here. This is going to be located in Vienna. This is at one point three eight million dollars. And just so you know, Vienna, uh, McLean, and Great Falls, parts of each of those areas are zoned for this school. So we're, the first property we're going to look at is going to be in Vienna, but we're also going to take a look at another property that's in another part of the school zone. So you're looking at a seven bedroom property right here, four and a half baths. Uh, this is a single family home. Mm -hmm. And this is all they're all going to be single family homes in this particular school zone. We don't have any townhouses um, in this area. Look at a half of an acre uh, lot with this particular property built in the 90s. Right. Um, so the next property we're going to look at is going to be a little bit lower at that 850 uh, mark. Still a single family home, mm -hmm. one car garage. So we're looking at something a little bit older. This time we're looking in Great Falls. Um, so once again, another uh, this one's another larger home. It has five bedrooms, three baths, still single family, but this was gonna be about 2,500 square feet while our last one was closer to 4,500 square feet. But we just wanna show you that although this is at the top of the uh, price range as far as our, our list today, you can find some homes for a little bit lower. They are gonna be a little bit older, probably smaller, um, but it's still going to put you in that same school pyramid as those, you know, million plus homes. Yes. And this is a split level, too. So this is not the same as the colonial. That we <laughs> well, no, it's not we like it's not the saw. same as the colonial. <laughs> still plenty of space, plenty of space to grow your family. Mm hmm. Right. And so our next uh, our next school on the list. So our next school is actually also in Vienna. Um, this school is going to be Wolf Trap Elementary. It's going to be the, one of the smallest schools on our list today with only 560 students enrolled last school year. Again, 16 to one student teacher ratio. Um, and so let's take a look at the location of this school. Again, we're in that northern part of the Fairfax County area, right next to, or really close to the Tyson's Corner mm -hmm. area. You can also see, I can see people working in uh, Reston Town Center, uh, the Reston area, even parts of Loudoun. Mm -hmm. um, although, work, I mean, Loudoun already has really good. I would say, I don't really know well. if people would move, would bring their kids into Fairfax or live in Fairfax if they have access to Loudoun schools, because Loudoun has really highly rated uh, public schools. Um, and just to go back to the ratings on the schools, you're looking at 97% of the students uh, score at or above the proficient level uh, for the annual math uh, SOL testing, and 94% score at or above for reading. Um, now, this school, and the further north you are, you are in uh, Fairfax County, you're going to see a little bit less diversity. So now we're looking at about 33% minority enrollment at this school. 
Once again, really high marks as far as the different uh, websites online. This school also had an A on niche.com, um, nine out of 10 on great schools. This was number eight, according to US News. Public School Review once again gave this one 10 out of 10, which puts it top 1% in Fairfax County. And it has five stars in uh, on School Diggers website. Um, now, what I will say, this is a unique situation as far as school pyramids go. We only have a few schools in Fairfax County like this that are split between two pyramids. Um, so this school is part of the Marshall Pyramid as well as Madison. So depending on your home address will determine which middle and high school you will go to um, for this school. So if you live in the southern part of Vienna, that is zone for this school, you're probably going to attend Madison. And if you are in the northern part, then you're more than likely going to be zoned for Marshall. Um, and Marshall is slightly higher rated than Madison. To keep, keep that in mind if you plan on holding on to the property long term. And if you're really focused on getting into the Marshall Pyramid, then you want to make sure that you double check any property that's in that area, right? Mm -hmm. you, you cannot just assume that just because uh, you're in Wolf Trap Elementary School that you're going to be going to Marshall. Absolutely, that's why we're gonna show you how to check that out later. But also just keep in mind that nothing is guaranteed when we're looking at schools because the county does on occasion re redraw districts. Right. Um, they, they assess it every July. So you just wanna keep that in mind. It doesn't happen frequently, but it does happen on occasion. That is correct, that is correct. So now let's take a look at the um where the school is on the map here um so we're looking at wolf trap right here and so again like i said it's at that northern part uh, of the county you're going to be uh three miles to tyson's uh corner you're 17.5 miles to the pentagon 18 miles to dc uh, again you're going to be 23 miles to fort belvoir so it's not likely that you'll be <laughs> um, working at fort belvoir but fort belvoir is one of the largest employers in fairfax county so we just want to make sure that that you're aware um you're aware of it, right? Yeah. And one thing we want to point out also about the schools we're going to talk about is you're going to hear a lot of the same programs being available at these schools. Um, this school right here does have the STEAM lab, similar to what we saw at Cove and Run. Right. Um, they have the same music programs available as our strings, band, and choir. Now, one thing that's different here is they do have a foreign language program. They have Chinese lessons available for grades one through six, and those are weekly lessons. So there are only a couple schools on today's list that are going to offer foreign language, and Wolf Trap is the first one. That's correct. The To get into the Wolf Trap School, you're looking at an average sales price of $1.2 million. On the high end, you're getting in for $2.8 million. On the low end, you're looking at $700,000. Mm -hmm. $700,000 is right about the average sales price of schools, I mean, of homes in all of Fairfax County. So you notice that these first two schools have been in the northern part of the county, which is also the more expensive part of the, the area. Yeah, and once again, just like the last uh, area, you're gonna be looking exclusively at single family homes within this school district. That is correct. So let's look at, um, we're gonna look at a property here that's uh, $1.15 million. Right, and so that is what, that, and that's the average, that's gonna be close to the average sales price for this particular area. So you're looking at something that's four bedrooms, three and a half baths. Um, it's just about 3,000 square feet on a half acre lot. So you will have some grass to cut and your kids will have some some lawn to play in. Mm -hmm. um, this was built in the 70s, though. So it does have a two car garage, which is nice, mm -hmm. but you're not gonna get a modern floor, floor plan. I mean, you will have to increase your budget if you want one of those modern floor plans. They are available. And also mm -hmm. there's new construction uh, in this area where people have torn down existing properties. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not showing you the, the there we go. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So, so this is the property. This is our subject property for today. Let's get to the beginning here. Um, so yeah. So this is this is built in the seventies. You're looking at two car garage, uh, four bedroom. You, you're gonna have much more of a traditional floor plan mm -hmm. here. Some updates. Um, if you're if you're gonna look for something that's more modern, you you just gonna have to increase your budget. But if you're looking in this area already, your budget is probably already probably at 1.5 or so just on on, on average right? mm -hmm. 
All righty. So let's see what we can take a look at at a lower price point. Now, as Abraham said, on the low end, you're looking at 700. So the property we're looking at actually sold at 815 or 815,000. So it's about the same age. This one was built in 1968. You're looking at a single car garage um, on about a quarter acre. Again, it's a little bit older. So you're looking at more of a traditional floor plan. It's going to be a little bit smaller, though. So you're mm -hmm. looking at 1,250 square feet split level design mm -hmm. again not many updates yes. um, this is a four bedroom two and a half bath but really we just want to show you that there are options even on the lower end of the price range that can still put you in some of these top rated schools yes and we know that a lot of our clients schools are important to them so they're willing to either stretch their budget or just deal with uh, purchasing a property that doesn't have as many updates, right? Absolutely. To because, get their kids into a, a highly rated school. Absolutely, because this $800,000 will go significantly farther, uh, you know, further south in Fairfax County. But then the further south you go, typically the schools are not as well regarded. Yes. That's All right. true. We actually have a couple comments. If you want to take a look at those. I will. I will. All right. So let's do that. All right. Well, Abraham cues that up. I want to remind you to take a look at the perfect home questionnaire that's going to be linked down below in the description. Um, if you would like to meet with us to talk about your move or we just have questions about the area and you want to chat with us about that, fill out that form and we will reach out to you to schedule a perfect home consultation. All right. So let's look at the comments. We have several here. Uh, okay, well, thanks for doing this. Your channel was extremely helpful when searching for our home. We needed, uh, we ended up in Springfield, tied to Lake Braddock, feeling blessed with the baby on the way. Congratulations. 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 And thanks for watching the channel here. So then we have that sounds uh, great. Level up, nice move. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 1 1 versus 5. So thanks so much for joining us. And then we have. I believe that's a bot. I believe that that is a bot. Okay. All right. Uh, this channel is quite helpful. Thank you so much. Excellent. That's good to hear. All right. For me, I will have to do Christian school if I do get a chance to move to Northern Virginia. There are several Christian school options in the area, mm -hmm. um, just depending on what your uh, commute is. And also, uh, several of the private schools um, have shuttle services for the kids uh, mm -hmm. throughout the region, too. So, so that shouldn't be that much of an issue for you, Hebrews. And then we have level up seven. Thanks, Hebrew. Yeah, my sister went to one and had a great experience. Always a good option. I think these two are talking to each other. I think so. Uh, aren't Northern Virginia prices too high now, though? Does anyone think prices will come down a bit in the next year or so? Uh, I don't think that prices will come down in the next year or so. And the main reason why is that in Northern Virginia, this is really like a location where people um, are are moving to the area from their first career or I guess from a promotion, right? So the median age for individuals that live in Northern Virginia are really be in those thirties. So we have individuals who went to college, got their master's degree or po any kind of PhD. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, so they've worked from their mid twenties to their early thirties, and then they got a promotion and then they're moving up to the area. They're usually, um, more fiscally conservative. So they have higher down payments uh, when they move to the area. They've saved up money. A lot of properties that we're seeing going on the contract right now, people are putting some sizable down payments. They're paying over asking with their savings, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not really seeing people just buy a uh, hundred percent financed uh, property. So mm -hmm. I don't really see the prices being affected too much in the next year or two. And with that being said, we always counsel our clients to really look at purchasing a primary residence as a long-term uh, investment or a long-term play. So you should be looking at something that you're really comfortable living in for the next 5, 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. especially if you're moving to the area um, for – you're relocating because of a job, right? Our military clients don't really have the same luxury. Exactly. Because, they may not be staying here for a long time, but if you plan on being here for a while, then we think it makes a lot more sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, so I don't think that you're going to have any any possibility of prices going down. And to be honest with you, we've already seen prices go up in January, which is just – 
mind blowing that, that people are now treating January and as February the beginning of the spring market. The of the spring we market. did. We were really surprised by that because we really thought at least fires would happen until February, maybe March until things really heated up again. But that's just not the case. I mean, as soon as the holidays were over, we really started to see multiple offers come back. We started to see contingencies being thrown out again. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we started to see escalation clauses, which pretty much from like September to December, everything was moving, but it wasn't flying off the market like it had been in spring right. and summer. We're right back to where we were in the summer. Absolutely. I mean, so many, we've actually had so many clients, uh, you know, they may be interested in the property that's coming soon. There's so many properties are, are selling before they even come on the market right now. That's correct. That's so correct. It's, we, it's picked up. And we, we like to let people know that usually people who are looking for deals shop in the winter time, mm -hmm. but this winter season was cut, cut short and it happened on like the blink, in the blink of an eye, mm -hmm. things were just different all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we yeah. have a client that's looking in Arlington right now, and they uh, we we kind of knew that the market has shifted mm -hmm. because they actually had a line to get into one of the open houses that they were going to preview. And this was in January. And this was in January. So I don't see prices coming down. I think that prices are going to escalate precipitously as we have more buyers trying to buy right before the interest rates increase. A lot of our buyers right now are are cognizant of the interest rates increasing. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's going to push prices up further. So keep those questions coming. Thank you so much for that. All right. So the next property on, I mean, not the next property. <laughs> the uh, next school on our list. The next school on our list. Um, so the next school on our list is actually going to bring us as uh, far south as we're going to go today. And I guess you can kind of say it's maybe southwest. Um, we're going to be looking at Sangster, which is located in Springfield. It's actually in that Lake Braddock pyramid um, that Level Up 7 mentioned. So this is going to be uh, the one of the largest schools on our list today. It has about a thousand students in it. Slightly higher student teacher ratio at 18 to 1. Um, but again, we're looking at really solid test scores with 98% of the students scored at or above the proficient level for math. And then 96% of students scored um, that high uh, on the reading um, portion of the SOLs. And so what we're looking at right now with these, this particular map, uh, this is the boundary of the, the school itself from off the public school uh, review website. To get an idea of where Sangster is, this is the map of the region. So we're looking at the southern part of Fairfax County. This is located in Springfield. The The next area um, that's to the south, the further south of, of Fairfax County is going to be Lorton. Mm -hmm. right? And then once you pass Lorton to the south, you go into Prince William County or the Woodbridge area. Okay, now to finish up as far as ratings go on Nish web on Nish's website, we're going to see they have an A rating, which is common theme for the schools on today's video. Nine out of 10 on great schools. This is actually the number one school on US News um, has a 10 out of 10 um, on public school review It's also in the top 1%. And then it has five stars on school digger. Um, and so uh, you may notice that we didn't go one, we're not going one through five on US News. And again, that's because we want to take a look at the schools that did well on all of the websites. Um, and so some of the schools that were rated pretty well on U.S. News actually were rated a little bit lower on some of the other websites. That's correct. That's correct. We also want to give you an opportunity to kind of see schools in different areas mm -hmm. and also kind of experience what the different housing type uh, is available to you. Right. Yeah. And so Sangster is actually going to be one of two blue ribbon schools on today's list. Um, it also is an advanced academic level four center. Um, it has the Spanish foreign language and elementary school program. So that means that some of the lessons are actually taught in Spanish for students in grades four through six. They have weekly lessons um, like that. And then students in the lower level are given STEAM lessons in the foreign language. Um, I mean, students in the lower levels have those uh, lessons monthly. Yes. Um, in addition to that, they also have a STEAM lab, um, which is something that we're seeing uh, amongst a lot of these schools in the top uh, in the top five. And then just like Coven Run, a lot of their enrichment programs are going to be sponsored by the PTO. Um, and so that's going to be things like Odyssey of the Mind, their chess club, there's a school musical. They also offer fencing and coding clubs uh, at Sangster as well. What's the difference between PTO and PTA? They're just two different nonprofits. So depending on the school, they choose um, which one of the two they're going to have. But they're both parent-teacher organizations or parent-teacher associations. Right. So, I mean, it's really tomato, tomato. Gotcha. One of the cool things about if you're moving to this area uh, and you, you live anywhere in the country, because all of our schools are 
either highly rated or highly ranked and also our population mm -hmm. consists of individuals who have i mean some level of college most have a master's degree mm -hmm. we have a lot of people here who have phds you're going to see a high participation rate in the ptas at least in those first three or four years right? yes i i want to say as a parent of older students it's, it tends to fall off as it the does. kids get a little older but those kindergarten and first grade moms they're really and dad sometimes yes they're, yeah yeah <laughs> yes yes dad's also participate yes you used to be in a pta too. yes yes, yes. you were <laughs> Uh, All right. And so uh, yeah. neighborhoods that are going to be served by Sangster are going to be Burke, uh, Fairfax Station, as well as Springfield, obviously. Yep. Um, now, Springfield is pretty big. So you, uh, like we said, you definitely want to check and make sure that the home is in the uh, is zone for the right school, because there are a number of different elementary schools in all of these areas. Yep. And now, to, as far as your commute, uh, if you're living in this area, you're going to be looking at an 18-mile commute to the Pentagon, uh, 22 miles to D.C., uh, 9 miles to Fort Belvoir, and 15 or 16 miles to Tyson's Corner uh, up here. It's not likely that you're going to be going to the Dulles mm -hmm. uh, Reston area, but, you know, it's possible. It's mm -hmm. possible. But usually we see people really kind of going to either the Pentagon that lives over here or they're going to uh, Fort Belvoir mm -hmm. uh, as well. The average sales price in this area is going to be nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars. The low is going to be at five thirty or five hundred thirty thousand dollars. And then on the high end, we're looking at two point two million dollars. And then low end, you are looking at townhouses. So mm -hmm. there are a considerable number of townhouse sales in here. And then at the high end, you're looking at, you know, single family homes. Some of those are going to be a newer construction or just really um, updated properties. Yeah, so if you're looking in Burke and Springfield, you're probably going to find a mix of single family and townhouses that are zoned for this school. Now, Fairfax Station is an area that's made exclusively of single family homes. So if that's the area you're interested in, you're definitely going to be closer to that average price point or even higher. Gotcha. All right. So now let's take a look at our first property uh, that goes to that's that's linked to Sankster. This is going to be uh, a home that's sold for nine sixty. Um, and again, like I said, it's going to be a single family property. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at something that's four bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms. You're going to have a lot of updates uh, mm -hmm. in this price range. Uh, well, I guess it depends on the square footage. So mm -hmm. the, the square footage of the property, you find a property that's huge, then you're probably looking at you're buying more square footage, not necessarily updates. Yeah. And so this is going to be a larger home. It's about four, uh, including the basement space. You're looking at somewhere around 4,200 uh, square feet. As Abraham said, four bedroom, two and a half bath on a pretty nice size lot. This lot is going to be over a half an acre. Um, and that's pretty common because this house is in Fairfax Station. Yep. Um, so that's pretty common in Fairfax Station. For the most part, homes are going to be on larger lots in that area. And when you're looking at that under a million dollar in Fairfax Station, you probably are looking at a property that hasn't been renovated yet. So or not fully renovated, fully renovated yeah. Right? So you're not going to look at any, uh, none of the properties are going to have walls removed. Um, you're really going to have to get into that 1.1, 1.2 million in, in Fairfax Station to start seeing those. And those properties are rare and they fly off the market. They literally fly. Mm -hmm. Now, what you will say is even at this price point, because this is on the lower end for Fairfax Station, mm -hmm. but it's average for this particular school zone, it's still going to be completely moving ready. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because these homes, even the oldest of them, are still going to be built, you know, in the mid to late 80s. So there are some updates. I mean, if you look at this one here, we see the bathrooms updated. So, you know, maybe they have updated bathroom, maybe not updated kitchen yes. or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's look at something on the lower end. Uh, we're about to look at something that is in the 700,000 price range. So still a single family home. It's going to be a little bit smaller, right? Mm -hmm. So at 2,700 square feet, so almost half <laughs> the size of the, the previous property. But still built around the same time. This one was built in 1981. You're looking at a smaller house and also a smaller yard. So this one has about a quarter acre lot. Um, and again, it's going to have some updates, but I think that we're just trying to show you that when you're looking at at these top schools you do have some options maybe if you can't stretch to a million dollars but you're still interested in being in one of those top pyramids you do have options are you going to find something for under 600 under 500 probably not right. um, but if you have a budget of seven to eight hundred thousand dollars you can definitely find a few options you're not going to be looking at you know just one property like if i don't get this house i just can't move into this school zone that's correct 
if you are going to be buying a property in the next couple months, because this this video is being filmed at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. just know that you're probably going to be bringing money to the table. You're probably going to be doing walk and talk inspections. We do have a video on our channel about the the home buying process and the different inspections that are available to you. So check out our channel uh, for that. And so, yeah, so so that is um, Sangster, right? All right. And we do have a comment if you want to pull that up before we move on to our fourth school. Absolutely. All right. All right. Okay. This is our elementary school. You're so right. Oh, excellent. 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 Level up <laughs> is actually going to the school. How do you all like it? Let us know in the comment section. What do you all think uh, about Sangster? Uh, we know that Sangster, it, it's, it's tough to get into Sangster just because of the, the competition for properties <laughs> in that, that Springfield area. Mm -hmm. um, but we do know several people who like it there. Let us know what you think about a level up. All righty. So next up, we are going to have Poplar Tree, which is our school located in Chantilly. Someone asked earlier if we're going to be looking at any schools in Chantilly. Um, so we have Poplar Tree, another mid-sized school, about 730 students enrolled last school year. Teacher to student ratio is about 15 to 1. 100% 1 of the students scored at or above the proficiency level for math and 96% scored at or above that level for reading. Holy smokes. Now, um, this school is actually going to have the largest a percentage of minorities of any of the schools on our list today. So 59% of the students in this school are going to be minorities. Um, and this is also the second school on our list that is a blue ribbon school. So they've been awarded the blue ribbon by the Department of Education. Yep. And as you can see on the map here, this is going to be to the west, towards the western part uh, of the Fairfax County area. It's it is far if you're, you know, if you're going into D.C. or if mm -hmm, you're going into, absolutely. Um, into the Pentagon. But, it, it, you know, you have great schools. You're also going to, as we'll look at some of the properties, you're going to get a nice size property uh, for your for your buck here. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so. So if we look at our ratings for this school on uh, niche.com, we're looking at an A, another 9 out of 10 on great schools. This school is rated number two by U.S. News, 10 out of 10, top 1% for the public school review. And once again, five stars from School Digger. Now, the high school pyramid for this school is going to be Chantilly High. Chantilly High is also rated one of the top high school pyramids on U.S. News website as well. Um, and so primarily, if you're going to be looking at this school, you're going to be in the either Chantilly or Centerville are going to be the two neighborhoods you're going to be looking at for right. this school. Just one thing I want to make a note. Uh, we haven't really mentioned it yet. It makes much more sense for you to try to buy a house in a great pyramid because if you get into a great pyramid, if you if you bring your littles into kindergarten or first grade, mm -hmm. then you don't really have to feel the pressure of moving, you know, when the kids get to be in third, fourth or fifth grade. Right. Like mm -hmm. we, we saw a lot of our friends because we live in the Kingstown area. Our kids are in the Hayfield pyramid. We saw a lot of our friends kind of start to move out around of the, the fifth area. and sixth grade around the fifth and sixth grade mm -hmm. uh, time period. So then they had to move twice. And I think that the, you know, is it, is it, um, is it something that's, that's uncommon? No, it's not uncommon, but if you could plan this out, mm -hmm. then you don't have to move twice. Right. Mm -hmm. no, no one likes to move. No one. Not yet. Not that I know of. <laughs> I haven't met anybody. Else. Speaking of someone, you hate to move. So that's yes. why you feel that way. <laughs> So now let's look at the, what we get for the, um, as far as like what our commute uh, looks like. So when we're when we're commuting from uh, Poplar Tree, we're looking at 7.5 miles uh, to uh, Tyson's. We're looking, I mean, I'm sorry, we're looking at uh, 15.5 miles to Tyson's. We're looking at 7.5 miles to Dulles Tech Corridor right up here. We have uh, 24.5 miles to the Pentagon and then 25 miles to uh, downtown D.C. We didn't provide you the data for Fort Belvoir because, you know, if you look at this distance here, it's not likely. <laughs> Highly that unlikely. <laughs> that you're going to be uh, commuting from uh poplar tree to uh fort belvoir now the average sales price of properties uh in this area is going to be eight hundred and ninety thousand dollars on a low end you're looking at getting in um, just above 600 at 623 on a high end you're looking at 1.3 million dollars so now let's look at our first uh property which is going to come in at that that average sales price of eight hundred and ninety uh thousand dollars so this actually sold for eight eighty 
Mm -hmm. Uh, You're looking at five bedrooms here, uh, three and a half baths. This is a single family house with uh, a a garage. And you're looking at just above 3,500 square feet. And it sits on uh, a a 1.4 acre lot. So just over that. Mm -hmm. So just over a quarter of an acre. So you'll be able to cut grass with your neighbors on Saturdays and Sundays. Mm -hmm. Or you get your lawn care service. As you can see, Nicely renovated, uh, mm-hmm. updated uh, property. You still not seeing those walls blown out yet, mm-hmm. right? So you you'll need to increase your price range if you're looking for a true open floor plan. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes, because this was built in the 1980s, so you're going to expect a more traditional layout. Um, but this is what you're going to find in that 880 to 890 price range. You're going to see a lot of homes very similar to this. This one here is actually located in Chantilly. Um, Now, if we look to the next property, we're actually going to go ahead and look at, it's going to be in Centerville. And that's going to just show you what we can get on the lower end of the price range. Um, So here we're looking at something that actually sold for 624. Um, So again, single family home, uh, three bedroom, two and a half bath, about 1,700 square feet. So it's a little smaller, right? About 1,700 square feet on a little bit less than a quarter acre lot built around the same time time frame as that last property so we're looking at something that was built in the mid 80s smaller kitchen mm-hmm. smaller living space but you do get into a great school and that's usually what's important to most people right like you could you could figure out a way to make this this space work mm-hmm. uh, from you and your family and also if you're an investor this is a uh, this would make a great rental as well absolutely i mean you're gonna you're gonna be able to get in for two hundred thousand dollars less than the average sales price so i think that you know that's a concession that some people may be willing to make absolutely absolutely So the next property on our list is going to be Mosaic Elementary, formerly known as Mosby Wood. So this school is actually located in Fairfax. It's the largest school on our list. They have over a thousand students, nearly uh, 1,050 students enrolled last school year. It has a student teacher ratio of 17 to one and 97% of its students score at or above the proficiency level for math. And 94% of those students score at or above that level for reading Um, in this school just like the last school has a 59% uh, of their students are going to be uh, minorities. Um, so that is those two schools are probably some of the largest minority percentages in all of Fairfax County. Yes. If diversity is something that, that is on your top list mm-hmm. of uh, criteria, we do know some parents diversity is important to them. Absolutely. Then those last two schools are going to be um, ideal for you. Again, you're looking at something that's really closer to the western part uh, of the Fairfax County area. You're right outside of the, the Beltway. So this little line right here, this is going to be uh, 495 and then 95 right here. So this is considered the beltway. This is inside the uh, beltway. This school is going to be outside uh, of the beltway. And uh, yeah, and so Chris is going to tell you a little bit more about the ratings. Okay, so Niche.com gave this school an A rating. Once again, 9 out of 10 on great schools. U.S. News gave it, um, ranked it number three out of all elementary schools in Fairfax County. 10 out of 10 are top 1% for public school review and five stars from School Digger. Um, as far as features at this school, we're going to see this is another advanced academic level four center. Um, this school actually, their student government is very involved in community service. They also have a couple of mentoring and tutoring programs where they partner with Oakton High School as well as some other businesses in the area. So this is, um, they also have a PTA that sponsors their enrichment programs. Their PTA also helps out with their foreign language program. And like every elementary school in Fairfax County, do offer band, strings, and choir in the upper elementary elementary level. Mm-hmm. And so now let's take a look at the what you're looking at for your commute. You're looking at 7.5 mile drive to um, Tyson's Corner, uh, 13 miles to the Dulles Tech Center. You're looking at 16 miles to the Pentagon uh, over here, seven, um, 16 and a half miles to downtown DC, and then 17 and a half miles to Fort Belvoir. So mm-hmm. You're kind of stretching the limits for Fort Belvoir uh, there, but you it's still mm-hmm. something that you probably go to Sankster first. If you can't get into Sankster, <laughs> then you would check out these schools that are kind of up to the north. Yeah. Them. Now, so as I said, the school is located in Fairfax, but it's also going to serve as some parts of Vienna as well. So that puts us at three different schools uh, that are that are zoned within Vienna. 
are three different schools with neighborhoods in Vienna that are on our list today. That's true. That's true. So just moving to Vienna will <laughs> probably get secure you one of the top rated schools. There you go. Uh, in the county. <laughs> the average sales price for properties in this area is going to be six hundred and forty thousand dollars. Um for schools for for properties that are zoned for this school you're looking at a low of 415 and then a high of 1.6 uh, uh, million dollars now one thing i want to point out there is that because this is in fairfax this area actually has a considerable number of condos um so and that's where you see that lower that 415 but if we were to remove condos and just look at townhomes and single family homes which i think is more likely for people who are who have families um then you're looking at the average sales price of about 710 Yep. And so what we'll do is we'll take a look at that average sales price uh, of what you can probably find uh, with a townhouse at the average sales price. And then we'll also take a look at a single family property as well. All right. Let's get that up on the screen there. And so this is going to be one of those townhouses, $715,000 uh, for a townhouse. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be newer too. This is probably the newest property we're going to look at, right? This was built just in 2010. Um, so you're going to see a much more open layout. This is a three bedroom, two full bath, two half bath. Again, completely updated uh, kitchen. It's going to be just over 2,400 square feet. Um, so the one thing you are going to trade off with this property compared to everything else is you're not going to have that huge lot. You know, most of the, the townhomes in Fairfax County are going to be on really small lots, usually less than one uh, tenth of an acre. Mm -hmm. You still get a two car garage, which is nice. Mm hmm which is nice so now let's take a look at that single family house option so you you have something here that's uh just over one million uh dollars here this is going to be a five bedroom three and a half bath uh property single family just over 2900 uh well just over 2800 uh square feet um, with the garage, it's going to be closer to 4000 mm -hmm. in the basement, and it is a small lot, right? So, mm -hmm. so you're looking at 1.14 acres, right? So, yeah, so small lot for a million dollars. But again, you're going to be in Fairfax, so that's a, a sought-after location. And again, this is going to give you an opportunity, if you're interested in a single-family home, because oftentimes uh, people have to wrap their heads around townhomes when they relocate to North Virginia. Right. So if you're interested in a single-family home um, versus a townhome, this is what you're looking at in that million dollar price range in Fairfax. Yeah. And who needs grass anyway, right? Am I right? That's how you feel. Am yes, right? that's true. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so we are at the end of the video. I want to show you all one more thing before we get out of here, which is going to be, um, you know, we, we've shown you five schools, mm -hmm. right? And you may be looking at properties already, right? If you're watching this video, you, I, I think you're looking at properties, although Level Up um, seems to purchase the property, still looking at the video, so thank you so much for the views. Um, <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta figure out a way to make sure mm -hmm. that the property you're looking at is zoned to the school that you want. Most people kind of reverse engineer their search where they first start off with the location mm -hmm. of their job then they they say to themselves, okay, I'll, I'm okay with a 30, 45, 45 minute, minute commute. commute. What does that look like? What does that look like? Right? They draw like a little circle around the region. And then they look for the schools. And then they look at the school ratings. Right? Mm -hmm. So so that means that that people usually get to the schools before they even get to the houses. So now we're going to just show you how you would search for or just at least confirm the school that you're you're going to oh this blocks that let's see right here no that doesn't work okay hold on hold on let's... well i think the it's going to show up in the middle of the screen so okay let's just do so there is a website uh, there you go there's a website it's the Fairfax County boundary locator system you put the house number and street a uh, uh, street name there and when you press enter it will ask you to confirm. Um, but after that, you will see the schools that are zoned for the for the home address for all grade levels. So you can see elementary, middle, and high school. But also, if the school is not an advanced placement center towards the bottom of the screen, you'll see where your student would attend for elementary and middle school if they are interested in the AP program or if they're uh, selected to it to um, participate in the AP program. That's correct. Yep. So make sure if you find a house that you like, 
punching that address right there. Don't trust what's in the MLS. That's what I was about to say next. Make sure you double check uh, because sometimes the MLS is not reliable. Sometimes they're using outdated information. As I said at the beginning of the video, sometimes those uh, boundaries are redrawn. Um, and so we don't know how often that is updated in the MLS. So it's best for you to verify the home address before you write an offer on the property. That's correct. That's correct. So don't trust what Zillow says, Redfin, all those other websites. Do trust you, this. Do your due diligence. Mm -hmm. Just put in that address. It's super quick, too. We just mm -hmm. showed you. It's super quick. Uh, and yeah. So if you're looking to start the process of buying a home in one of the five school districts that we mentioned, Colvin Run, uh, Wolf Trap, Sinkster, Poplar Tree, or Mosaics, formerly known as Mosey Woods, please fill out the Perfect Home Questionnaire. There is a link in the description uh, to the Perfect Home Questionnaire, and we'll schedule a time to meet online. Right, and we'll answer any questions you have, whether it be about relocating, about the school, or just your timeline, because that's usually one of the things we talk about most is trying to figure out how far in advance you need to start your search. And here's a hint. At this time of the year, you need to start a few months sooner than you thought you would. Yes, yes. You'll probably be looking at placing at least three or four offers on properties that you do not uh, secure. Usually we find that, that people usually take our clients maybe like two to three offers to understand mm -hmm. or really to get comfortable with what is necessary to mm -hmm. win uh, in this particular market. And then you, you know, you'll, you'll find your house of your dream. Well, not really your dreams, but it's the house. You'll find a house you can you, that, that you love and you can live yes, in, that, and that you can have dreams there. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so yeah, so we'll stay on for a few more minutes to answer any questions that you all may have. So I'll post them right there in the comment uh, section um, while we're waiting for a few more questions to come in. If any, um, is there anything that you learned from this this research project? That you Let's didn't know see. Before. You know what I was surprised by actually was when I was researching the schools, I was surprised to see how much some of the schools varied from one website to the next. Um, so there were some schools that showed up, as I said, repeatedly on all of the websites. Right, right. Uh, but then there are other schools that I have that I hold in high regard, maybe are that schools that I knew about that I thought um, would end up on this list. There are actually two in McLean that I thought would end up on this list. But the numbers, when I looked at them on all five websites, the numbers didn't support that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that I've noticed or I've just, I mean, you just learn as you're working in this market is if we look at this map here, mm -hmm. you'll notice that most of the uh, schools are kind of located in this little region right here, right? Yeah. So, so there is, I mean, there's tons of home sales in this area here. No school mm -hmm. in the Alexandria uh, area came on the list. Mm -hmm. No schools even in the uh, inside the Beltway, which is a little surprising because we have McLean up here. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have Falls Church uh, up here, which are two um, relatively expensive areas. Mm -hmm. um, now, what I will say is a couple of schools in the McLean area are they do have high ratings. They, they just didn't show up on all of them. Exactly. Or I'll give an example. Uh, all of the schools I, sh I shared today had nine out of 10 on great schools. Yes. Well, some of the schools that did really well on niche.com or even did really well on school digger, they may have had an eight right. on, um, on great schools. And so because I had so many schools with a nine, then, you know, automatically I went with, and they both had an A on niche. Well, then the school that had a nine out of 10 on great schools will make the list versus the school. Um, just to throw a few of those out there, uh, in a couple of the schools that, you know, I really thought would make the list are Navy uh, Elementary and Kent Gardens and Kent Gardens is in McLean. Right. Well, I think that that's it for today's show. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to say before we get off? That's it. Other than you may want to check out our video on Wednesday if you're considering Prince William County. Oftentimes when we are considering, uh, when parents are considering where to move, um, we know you can get a little bit more for your money in Prince William County. And one of the things that keeps people in Fairfax County is they believe we have better schools. And overall, the schools are more highly rated in Fairfax County. But there are some really highly rated schools in Prince William County. And on Wednesday, we're going to cover those. That's true. And there will also be a link in the description for you to search for properties by the schools that we mentioned on today's video. So come back to the, the description to find that link. And then we have one more question that came our comment that came in. So we'll go ahead and take care of that before we sign off. Excellent. 
All right, so Hebrews 11 verse 5 says, uh, Curious as to why you seem to get so much more land and house size for the money in Centerville when compared to other areas of Fairfax County. Um, well, that's that's pretty easy to, to kind of show you why. Mm -hmm. When we look at the map here, the major employment bases are going to be in Washington, D.C., proper, or even like this, um, the Pentagon area here. So you have the Pentagon, you have Crystal City right here. You also have um, the Courthouse Clarendon the courthouse area. Courthouse Clarendon area. So there's a lot of employers right here. Most people, uh, the closer you get to this employment bases, the more expensive it becomes. And Centerville. Chantilly is on the far western side. I mean, of the as county. far west as you can go. As far as right, so as soon as one section over is going to be like the Gainesville area on Prince William County, right? Mm -hmm. So, so it kind of makes sense that the the distance that you travel to the I would say really the Pentagon, not necessarily DC, but to the Pentagon, as, as this distance increases, your home prices are going to decrease. Right? Mm -hmm. um, now that does depend if you're going into Fairfax Station, you're not going to really see that as much. Mm -hmm. If you're going into if you're going like up to this 66 or like the rest in part, like it gets a little bit more expensive up here. But this Centerville part off of uh, 66. The, this this road here is also uh, there's a lot of traffic over here too, so it's not it's just not as desirable. Mm -hmm. um, and there's as you can see, like the Centerville's over here. The next major employment base is going to be Reston or Tyson's over here. Uh, there's really not or even Loudon or even Loudon, right? Yeah. That's true. So you could um, go into Loudon. So that that's why that's why you can get so much bang for your buck. Um, to the west of the county. Mm -hmm. That's also why you can get more bang for your buck to the south of the county. In, in Prince William. In Prince William County mm -hmm. or even uh, in Lorton, right? So you can mm -hmm. get a much larger house in Lorton than you could in Tyson's Vienna area as well. Uh, so thanks for that question. And I think that this is a great place to end today's show. Um, thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next video. Peace. You can say peace. Peace. Okay, excellent. How do you gonna know that we want?